Hello everyone. Welcome back to machine learning sessions. In this session, let us discuss about the gradient descent algorithm and also the stochastic gradient descent. And also we'll see the changes between gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent. First, let us see the gradient descent algorithm. So here we have the gradient descent algorithm. So where we are passing the training examples and the learning rate eta as an input. And here the training example is in the form of x comma t where x is the input value and t is the target output. And here we are initializing each wi to some random value. Okay, so we can take any value of our choice and then until the termination condition is met. So that means until our weights are meeting the required criteria of the target output, we need to repeat this process. So that is, first we will be initializing delta w i to zero. Suppose if you have, so two weight values and suppose if you are taking x1, x2. So then we will be initializing your delta w naught to zero, delta w one to zero and also your delta w2 to 0. So this will be, we will be doing initially. And then for each training example, what we will do? So we take the input instance and we will be computing the output. So here we are taking an unthresholded linear unit. So this output we are not passing through any filter. So that you should remember. And for each linear unit weight wi, we are calculating the change in weight that is delta w i, the small change in weight, which is delta w i plus eta into t minus o x i. So here you can just pause for a minute and you try to recollect. When we tried with the perceptron learning rule, so it is only eta into t minus o multiplied with the x i. But here what we are doing, so we are adding to the previous value of delta w i. So that means we are not going to update the weights. This wi is equals to w out of delta wi. So that we are not applying for each input at a time. But we are calculating the change in error for all the inputs. And finally, we are updating the weights. So let's see this with an example. So here I have done an example for you. Since this works with nonlinear problems, nonlinearly separable examples, I have taken XOR. Okay, so here you have the food table of XR as well. And so here if you see, I have taken the same weight that we took for the N and R problems, the same values I'm taking. Okay, W0 is minus 0 0.3, W1 and W2 are 0 0.5. And here the learning rate, I'm taking it as 0 0.5. Purposefully, I have taken a larger value so that it will be easy for computation. And by default, X0 is the weight value x0 is the input value associated with the bias, which by default will be treated as 1. So now, we will be updating or we will be calculating the delta wi using this formula. So now if you see, for x0, x1 and x2 with input values 0, the out, sigma wi xi, which is our output, okay? See, the output that we have obtained is minus 0 0.3. So now, let us calculate delta w naught. Okay. So, initially it was initialized to 0. Now, 0 plus eta, which whose value is 0 0.5 plus, sorry, 0 0.5 into t minus o. So, here what is the t value? t value is 0. t value is 0. So, it is, uh, let me redo it, 0 minus 0 0.3. Minus of minus is a plus value. Okay. So it is plus 0 0.15. So this value. Okay. So only W naught we have computed. Why not W1 and W2? So because X1 value is 0. So delta W1 will become 0. And delta W2 is also 0. So now let us take for the input values x1, 0 and x2, 1. So now if you see delta w1, already I have the value of delta w1 as 0 0.15. So to this, I'm adding 
theta into t minus o. So here the output that I have obtained is 0 0.2. But what is the target output? Target output is 1. So 1 minus 0 0.2. So if I simplify this, I'm getting a value of 0 0.25. So similarly, let's see the computation of delta w2. So delta w1 will be 0 because here also x1 value is 0. So only w2 will be changed. So initially w2 is initialized to 0 plus eta into t minus o, 1 minus 0 0.2. If you simplify, you are getting a value of 0 0.40. So now for the next set of inputs, once again, we are preserving the previous value of delta naught. Okay, so to that we are adding this. So it is not 0 0.0425, it is only 0 0.25. Let me spell it. Okay. So now the output that you are obtaining is 0 0.425. So similarly, we are updating W1 here. So earlier W1 was not updated so far. Now it is getting updated. Okay, its initial value is 0, 0 plus 0 0.5 into t minus o, which is 1 minus 0 0.2. Once again, we are getting its value as 0 0.40. So now we are taking the next set of inputs, x1 as 1 and x2 as 1. And so these are the computations of w0, w1 and w2. And here the change you can see. So all the time we are preserving the previous value of delta wi. Okay, so here the previous value of delta w naught is 0 0.425. So to that, we are adding this eta into t minus o. Similarly, for w1, previous value of w delta w1 is 0 0.40. So to that, we are adding this value. Similarly with w2. So now, at the end of this iteration, okay? So at the end of this iteration, these are the final values of delta w naught, delta w1 and delta w2. So I finished with all the inputs. So now your weight updation should start using this formula. So delta w1, wi is equals to wi plus delta wi. So you just compare this with the previous XOR or any problem, whatever we have worked out. So there, whenever there is a change in weight, immediately, Whenever we calculated delta wi, immediately we have updated the input value. But here, at after updating all the weight vectors, then we are adding it. So delta w naught is minus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.075, which is coming to minus 0 0.3. I think uh, I went uh, wrong in this computation. You, you just do it for yourself. I'm sorry. And W1 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.55. And similarly, with W2 also. So now you can see the change in the inputs, how much they are getting changed. So the actual values of delta double, actual values of W1 are 0 0.5. So to that, only a point 0 0.05 was added. Similarly, with W2 also. So now with this new set of inputs and the same learning rate, once again, we will try to update the weights. So like this, you have to continue with number of iterations. So then finally, your weights will converge to our desired output. So now let us discuss about stochastic gradient descent. So stochastic gradient descent or incremental gradient descent. This will update the weights incrementally following the calculation of error for each individual example. So that means it will not wait till all the inputs are completed. But as soon as one example is com after computing the output of one example, immediately the error will be calculated based on the error the weights are updated here. So here, for updating the weights, we will be using the same weight updation rule. So that is delta w i is equals to one second. So w i is equals to w i plus delta w i. So this is the formula that we will be using for updating the weights. Okay, so let's take this as one.
So now this training rule we will be calling as delta rule or LMS rule, which is least mean square rule, which can also be called as Adalin rule or Widrohoff rule. And here, once again, where your delta WI value is, so can you recollect the formula? Here the delta WI is eta into T minus O multiplied with XI. Okay. So you will be calculating this delta WI, the change in the weights. We will be calculating using this formula and then we update the weights. So now here the error function. I'll just show you the change in the error function as well. So when we talked about gradient descent, so there we have seen the error as, so here we will be representing the error function as ED of W, which is equals to sigma half TD minus ori whole square, right? So this is what we have seen. But here, since we are working with a single example, summation will not be there. So, okay. Hope you got the changes between stochastic gradient descent and the gradient descent. In the gradient descent, we will be performing changes for each and every input. After everything is done, then we will be calculating the error and we will be summing up the error value and also the weight updation is done at the end of all the inputs. But here what is happening, we are computing delta wi and for each Input example, immediately we will be computing this change in weight and also the error value. So here summation is not there for stochastic gradient descent because we will be calculating the error for each and every example subject. <coughs> we will be computing for every example. So here the change in this algorithm also I'll show you. So if you see the changes, since we are updating immediately, so we will not be using this delta wi is equals to delta wi plus eta into t minus o. Okay, so this we will not be using here. Whereas, so directly this formula we will be updating. Delta wi is equals to wi plus eta into t minus o multiplied with xi. So this will be the change. Okay. So this step will not be done. So the same algorithm you can use for gradient descent and for the stochastic gradient descent as well. And this is also with unbiased linear unit. Okay, so the computation example also you can apply similarly. So now let us see the differences between gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. In the gradient descent, the error is summed over all examples before updating the weights. Whereas in the stochastic gradient descent, what we are doing, weights are updated upon examining each training example. So since in the gradient descent, since we are summing over all examples, this requires more computation per weight update step. Whereas the stochastic gradient descent will not require that much computation. And then gradient descent is used with large step size to converse very fast. And similarly, the stochastic gradient descent also is used with large step size. Though we are updating at the end of every input, the computation process is the same. So here also we are using a larger step size itself. And then when there are multiple local minima, there is no guarantee that the procedure will find the global minima in the gradient descent. But in the stochastic gradient descent, when there are multiple local minima with respect to the error also, this stochastic gradient descent avoids falling into this local minima. So stochastic gradient descent is applicable when we have, when we want to, uh, when we are working with multiple local minimas. So these are the differences between gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. If you like the content, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next session.